Hi everyone, this is Susie from Minnesota and I garden in a zone 4 and I'm going to do a video today on my hostas and companion plants for them. Better late than never, I know a lot of you have been asking for it so hopefully this helps you plan for next year. And um, some of the hostas I don't know and those are ones that I've gotten from friends over the years. They're more of the common varieties and um, I still have them. And some aren't my favorite but I keep them because they're they're nice fillers for now and it's just you can't go wrong with a hosta they're pretty easy to grow so on that note um remember I garden in a zone four so a lot of these plants I'm showing you they're hardy in my zone and um there might be some that are a little more tender that I do protect, but I kind of take the chance of them not coming back. And um, knowing that I'm in a zone four, the, what it is is my summers are always really nice. They're usually a little wetter than what we have this year, but it's the winters that dictate the zone four, which it can get down to minus 25, minus 30. That doesn't always happen, but that's just in the rare circumstances that it does. So they've, they've got to be pretty hardy. And, um, and also, uh, this area is not so bad around my kennel area, but back in this garden here, that's where the issue lies, where they have to tolerate very wet conditions. It's a very boggy area. I've lost a lot of plants along the way. Some plants have worked through it, struggled, they're still around. But um, all I know is with hostas, the best thing I can tell you is I have never killed a hosta with too much water. They they love it. I'm not saying plant them in like a pond, but they do love their moisture. It's I find that the more you can keep them well watered, moist, the better they're going to do for you. If they're in a drier situation, they're they're not going to struggle. They'll still look good because hostas are just pretty easy that way but I just find that my hostas grow a bit better and faster given more moisture. Most of my gardens are in at least four hours of sun, if not four to six hours of sun. I don't have anything in deep shade. So if that helps you a little bit there, most of my hostas get morning sun, especially back here, which probably gets, like in this area, I would say that gets closer to six just because my neighbors removed a pine tree and it's definitely getting a lot more sun. But again, it's morning sun and it's also a very wet situation back here, so they seem to do a bit better. And then about fertilizing. Most of my plants, I don't fertilize regularly. I probably should, but it's just not something I do. There are some plants that I might add a little more fertilizer to, like roses, uh, more shrubs than anything, hydrangeas. But um, what happens is I have compost bins back here. That takes me a bit to get compost. I'm just not really good at turning it as often as I should. But when I do get compost, I lay it down in the fall. I try to. I won't have any this year, but maybe I'll have some in the spring but I'll just lay it around the plants, especially my favorite ones and my favorite hostas. It takes a lot to get a lot of compost. And um, there was one YouTube channel that I had found. It's called Funky Gardens, and I will try to remember to post it. And the man on there is just full of knowledge on hostas. It's unbelievable. I learned a lot from him. And um, I tried it for a couple years. And then I stopped because I could not find Mill Organite anymore at my big box store. They don't carry it. And I love Mill Organite. And it's more of a slow release fertilizer. It builds your soil life. But what he did is right away when your hostas are emerging from the ground, they're like little fingers is what I call them, he just kind of spread some Mill Organite on the plants. And then when the leaves start to unfurl, he comes back later with a uh, water soluble um, tomato food and um, I did that for two years and then like I said then I couldn't find the mill organite and then I stopped and I don't know if I could see a difference but it's definitely not going to hurt it 
but the mill organite, all I know is that greens up the grass. It takes about a year to really see a difference, but the mill organite, I just spread on everything. Just kind of broadcast it over, and it doesn't burn, so I, and also some people say that it deters rabbits, so can't hurt with that. But if I ever do find, and I, I will not pay what Amazon is asking for it. That's for the same um, amount. It's it's almost four times the price. That's that's too expensive. So I'll wait and see if I can find it somewhere else. And um, the other thing is I don't divide a lot of my hostas. Like some of the bigger ones, the extra large ones, like the summon substance. I don't. It just takes them a long time to recover from that. And I want my hostas to be as big as they can be. Some of the more common varieties and smaller ones, there's a, sorry, there's a bee floating around my head. Some of the common ones are, um, I might split them. Usually when I end up moving a hosta and if I, they end up splitting, so be it, that just happens. But I, I'm not saying don't split them, but it's just something that I don't really do. So it's, it's up to you. And, um, the other thing is I had found a website, New Hampshire Hostas, and I absolutely love that site. And I have a little list that I keep. I look at the hostas that they have, and I I go to the nurseries around the local and see if they carry them. If not, then I'll order from New Hampshire Hostas. They are smaller, but, I mean, beautiful quality. I've never had an issue with them, but the nice thing about that website is it groups all of your hostas, like your blues, your greens, your extra large, small, minis, any of that. So it kind of helps you decide how you want to plan your garden. So if you want to look for ones with gold margins or white, it's really nice because when you go to a garden center, they're not even going to look like that. Their immature hostas don't even look close to what a mature plant looks like. Like some in substance, if you were to buy an immature one, you would think that that's only going to be a tiny hosta. And the leaves are smaller, so that's why it's kind of nice to have a reference. And I find that I'm always going to New Hampshire hosta. And they have companion plants too, but and I love the quality. I'm not sponsored by anyone. It's just a website that I find very, very useful when in search of hostas. And like I said, I always have a list of ones I want to grow. I didn't get any this year. I was kind of just in a maintaining mode, but I know next year will be a different story. So I'm hoping I went over everything here as far as... Yeah, I think I did. So now we'll start the tour. I'm hoping to keep it a little bit shorter. I don't want this to get too long. So again, the best thing I can tell you about hostas is they are pretty much, if you want to say maintenance free, well, I can't say that because a lot of people have issues with slugs and snails. I don't have snails. I do have slugs. This year was a pretty dry year, so I didn't have to lay down any bait for them, which I do use sluggo in very wet years. And also, there is a product by Bonide. I forget what it's called. So it also helps with earwigs, which I haven't had a problem in the last two years, but earwigs can do some nasty stuff to your hostas, too. So this right here is, I think it's going to be close to one of my favorite hostas because look at that. The margins are actually almost white. There, there's something striking, and it's got a rippled edge. And this was planted last year. I had gotten that from New Hampshire Hostas. And um, I think for just one full growing season from last year, that's unbelievable. It's supposed to get two feet tall, four feet wide. So I'm, it will start touching, but I love my Hostas and perennials to touch. I like that full lush feeling that they get. That's and sometimes it can be a little close, but I do like that. But you can see and there's lots of growth down there. So I'm very happy with that hosta, which is called Bridal Falls Hosta. And um, this one is definitely doing really good, which is, you know, kind of weird considering I thought this one wasn't going to make it. So loving that hosta. And I have this one planted at all four all four corners of the kennel. 
Again, Bridal Falls Hosta, love it. Can't go wrong with Ladies Mantle Alcamilla Mollus. This is one of the easiest plants I've ever grown. We'll always have it. It tolerates shady conditions, probably not full shade, but um, but yeah, I love it. And I love the flowers that it produces too. They lasted a long time until we got the rain that smushed them down. They're yellow, but it's love this. And I like that it gives another little different texture with the hostas. It loves it over here a little bit more than in my boggy area, just because it's a little better draining over here. But still, it's, I haven't killed it yet with the water over there. It does struggle, so I would say a little better drainage for that one. I do plant daylilies with this area here because this does get a lot of sun. They probably would do a bit better in more sun, but I know over here it gets quite a bit and those did really good. So up to you about daylilies. I'm not saying plant daylilies with hostas, but it also gives a different, you know, a different texture with your foliage. But this one is going bananas down here and I saw and I know some daylilies can tolerate that part sun. And like I said, most of my gardens get at least four hours of sun. Okay, this is huge. I mean, look at that. And this is a hardy geranium, and this is Biocoval. Now, it looks fantastic, and the, the lawnmower keeps it chopped so it doesn't come into here. But, what can I say? That's just impressive on its own. Really, really like this. And the scent from it is unbelievable. This area is definitely doing a lot better than other areas around my kennel. And I just think it's not so close to that big tree over there. So that's where with the competition of the tree sucking up all the moisture and the nutrients, I probably will do a little more compost in this area and around here. But I'll have to get it from a big box store, which I normally don't do. So yeah, so this is all pretty similar over here. Daylilies, Alcamilla mollus. Like I said, I love Alcamilla mollus. Can't go wrong with that plant anywhere. And like I said, look at that. I, I knew it would get big, but that's impressive. I really like that. So I'm just going to bounce over here real quick and just show you so yeah this is Bridal Falls Hosta here you can see it's not quite as big as the other ones the leaves aren't I'm not sh and I think because there is a big tree root right here if you can see it's the hardest thing with planting perennials with big trees all the roots this one over here isn't too bad we had some crazy wind yesterday so all the leaves are falling off the trees. So yeah, you can see the leaf is a bit bigger, but it's not quite as big. So just wanted to show you, and yeah, this poor hardy geranium, not quite so impressive. But he's trying. So back here I have this shrub here that doesn't look quite so fantastic. I think this is a shrub that needs a little more moisture than what it got this year. But this one right here, which has run all the way in front here, is Sabaria sorbifolia sem. And um, it's, it's a beautiful shrub. It does run like crazy in my climate. And I'm thinking it might just because it, it usually is wet back here, so it might really like that but it's a beautiful shrub. It, the foliage emerges pink in the springtime and then it gets white flowers and then it produces berries. Oh no, it doesn't produce berries, that's something else. But I wanna say it might turn a color, but there's a lot of interest and this foliage, gotta love that texture. So this is also a good one for that part shade. But the foliage in the springtime is glorious. 
turtle head is another one that is just beautiful. Covered in bees. And this is an, uh, I would say it probably gets between four to six hours of sun. Very wet conditions back here. Loves it. It's massive. Kiloni. That's Again, that late fall color, you can't go wrong with that. So many things are petering out and this is just starting. And it's just one plant and it's spread that much. It's been here probably for about eight years. So, but I just let it take over. And then I usually have luck with bee balm too in kind of a part sun, shadier situation. You'll, you'll know with your plants if it needs a little bit more sun, but they do pretty good and they tolerate the, the bogginess. Uh, down here, this is Rainbow's End and this is a beautiful hosta. So this one I recommend highly. Now when you get the immature plant, it's not gonna resemble this. The, the leaves are gonna be skinnier. You're gonna think that it, they don't even look the same, but when it gets to its mature size, it's beautiful. And it is a late bloomer too, if you like the flowers on hostas. So there's that to consider, but love, love this. That variegation is gorgeous. Next to it, I wanna say this is Maui Buttercups. I don't know for sure, but this is one where you can see, and also being dry, but and I mean, it is that time of the season, but this did have some scorch marks, so this might be getting a little bit too much sun. But love this pop of color here, along with the variegation on this hosta. That just works really good. So that's the other thing that I kind of consider with my hostas is don't do too much variegation together, and I'll show you an area that I'm not happy with. But kind of play off one another if you can. But honestly, you really can't go wrong with hostas. I don't know the particular name that's like the variety, but I know this is a Persicaria. I love it. Um, it looks like it's going to be getting it some... Oh yeah, right here. Can you see that? This does self-seed all over the place, as you can see. But I kind of let it. I love that different foliage in there. And let's see, I do have some hostas back here, just common ones that I got from friends. Not my favorite, but like I said, they're just, they're doing pretty good. Holding a spot for now. Giant fleece flower. I've had this for at least five years. Let me just get this mosquito. And um, it has not spread any more than this. I mean, you can see the if you want to say canes down there they're pretty massive but again I'm a zone 4 so maybe take a little more precaution with this plant but it's such a focal point in the garden I do like it a lot more hostas so this is an area here where I have a lot of variegation going on and it's just right now everything in this area area is variegated so I'm thinking I might move some stuff around and um, move a hosta with no variegation just to kind of break that up but it still looks pretty decent this is again normal for this time for things to start looking like this it's just everything's getting tired in here I have a pulmonaria lungwort love this plant slugs don't like it it's got a very rough texture to it so and this is it's not a big fan of wet situation very very wet situations I mean when I'm I had ducks in my backyard one time because it was pretty much a pond but I love pulmonaria and um, that's a good for that's a good one for shade a still bees I don't know the varieties of my still bees except for one More ladies mantle. This one, these have 
struggled a bit because like I said lots of moisture but they do bounce back so like I said they are resilient that's why I'm like they are they're a go-to for me and then I have more pulmonary in here and it blooms early so that's what I like about that when your garden is just first start starting to emerge and you're lacking for color that's an early bloomer in the spring See what I mean? I mean, I know that's just a coleus, but look at those two together. Isn't that stunning? I think that's another Maui buttercups. Like I said, I'm not, don't quite know for sure. So correct me if I'm wrong. I love it when you guys help me out with that. I don't know any of the varieties back here. Oh, I was gonna go, how could I miss this one? So this is a Pagoda Dogwood golden shadows and this is the one where um, in the spring the leaves are almost like a chartreuse it's like a beacon in the garden and it, it keeps the variegation you can see and then when it gets cooler in about August September it starts turning pink like that one's really pink right there it's really pretty but this one flowers really nicely, and then it, that's what produces the berries, and the birds love it. Slow grower, but just love this. And it tolerates that kind of part sun situation. It's kind of hard to see, but oh, it's one of my favorites. And it is a tree. I think it only gets maybe 10 feet tall or so. But like I said, slow grower. I don't know this shrub here, but I love it for the variegation. It, oh, one second. Mosquitoes are pretty bad. But this is one where I think it's getting too much sun because you can see it's scorching a little bit. It has been, but look at all the little flowers on there. And um, it is one that dies completely to the ground and then comes back and it's spread just over here just a little bit so it does not run a lot on me but I love it for that little pop of color amongst all of the green in here this hosta is Empress Wu she's a slow grower she's a bit fussy I won't I won't plant another Empress Wu I know other people's looks great it has looked better than this but this struggled a little bit I want to say two years ago so um, it, it has bounced back, but we will see. That also was one that came in a huge can and trying to dig the hole for that. That's why I like New Hampshire hostas because you pretty much get plugs. It is so much easier digging around trees when you only have to dig a small hole like that. I have Philip Pendula back here and that likes it very moist. It's usually about I would say at least five feet tall, and this year it maybe got three and a half. And that does tolerate my sit. It, it gets more sun back here. So I would say it does probably a little bit better in at least six hours of sun, but loves the moisture. So this is a very, very wet area of the garden. All of these hostas are from friends, except for Empress Wu. So, which is so nice when you first start gardening it helps when you can get plants from friends because it just helps save on the pocketbook it really does they might be common but they definitely thrive and these are ones where if I were to split they grow really quick the extra large ones take a bit longer I have Lily of the Valley in here um, it is very aggressive it's not something I would recommend if you want it in a teeny tiny little area it will take over it does like it wet too it spreads a little bit more but I love it can't go wrong with that scent in what late spring and it it does end up looking like this too it's one of the first things that starts looking pretty tough when we start going into sleep mode if you want to say that dormancy and here, I don't recommend this. I did not realize that this was a perennial when I had it in a pot one year. A little piece of it rooted into the mulch and it took over. This is Lamia strum. So when I looked it up, it, I 
think it's hardy to a zone two. So it's here to stay. I don't mind it. I have a big enough area. When you think how big my gardens are, it is nice to have ground covers to help fill in spaces. I just take precaution when you plant ground covers. Some are very aggressive, some are very nice. So this is definitely an aggressive one. Um, it runs, you can see, and I just pull it up where I don't want it. I'll have to make sure it doesn't start going into here. So this one, I do know these are all these hostas here that are kind of surrounding the big tree here. I have gotten from New Hampshire hostas. And um, that this one is Summer Warrior. Beautiful foliage. It's just this chartreuse lime green beacon in the garden. Love it. It's taken these plants a little bit longer to get big because of this tree. So this is where I need to give more moisture and I think I'm going to do some compost around it. This is blue mouse ears. I had this in another part of my garden last year that I moved. It was late September. It's, it's doing okay, <laughs> but um, I also do find that the smaller varieties take a long time to get, you know, wide. The next one is Imperial Palace. Love this one too. I think I did pretty good over here with the grouping of non-variegated to the variegated and then this beast, which is humpback whale. Impressive hosta. I think even the second ear, it was impressive. So, look at that. The next one here is Brother Stefan. That one's really pretty too. I do usually have slug damage. So, no, my houses are... Usually they look a little bit more beat up than this. So it just, it was one of those years. This could be Rainforest Sunrise. And this is a plant I moved from another part of my garden. Last year I was trying to fill this up and then kind of make more room for my hostas to grow because they were getting a bit big. But, um, Again, this garden is fairly new. I planted it last year in September, so it's gonna take things a little bit more or a little longer. I'm hoping next year I start seeing a little bit of a difference. Uh, this is King Size Hosta. I have lots of coleus in here, so I'm not even, they're not perennial, they, they die, so. Definitely not hardy in my zone. Gonna still be down here. They like wet conditions too. And down here is Afterglow. Another blue mouse ears that um, split when I dug up the other one. Another a still be. And this might be something where this is a little tight in here, but I just moved it here for the time being. And then when this coleus dies, I might, maybe not. All of this will grow and you will see within probably three years that you probably won't see much ground. And front here, this is just a native, which is prairie alum root. I don't have the best of luck with Actia. It was Simicifuga. It, I don't know, I know things like to dig around it. I don't get why, the, it doesn't matter where I have it. Things just keep digging around the base of it. So I'm not sure why that is, but I struggle with that plant. Um, we'll see what it does next year. These grasses I'm not gonna recommend because it says zone six. But if you can grow grasses, I know Hakanakloa is a really good grass for shade gardens. I try it, and these are what I call tender, 
and they might get, look good this year, but they might not even survive next year. So I will be putting huge amount of leaves on there to help protect them. And I lost my tag. Hmm. That is strange. It's probably blown somewhere. And Solomon Seal. Love Solomon Seal. Can't go wrong with that plant. It's I took two good hunks from the front garden and I just love how it arches, adds a different contrast, and kind of towers over the hostas. And it's just can't be without that plant too. This is the nice ground cover. This is sweet woodruff. And I mean, and it's and it's fine here. It's it's not gonna hurt this plant at all. And it's just it's it can't compete with other ground covers though. It's definitely a little more gentler, if you wanna say that. It blooms in I would say late spring, white flowers, really delicate, there's a scent to it. But it usually gets taken over by something else, so it's I'm very happy to see it thriving there. This could be because we were too dry. This this host has been suffering kind of the whole season. Could be because it's getting a lot more sun than others. Again, don't plant your hostas in full sun. You can. I know a lot of people do. But all the ones in full sun in my town are scorched. It looks like someone took a torch to it. Oh, see, there's my take for the grass. Blew all the way over here. So this is... Conical Macra Sun Flare. And this is zone six to eight. And that's that grass over there. So that's why I said it's it's tender. Must have hosta curly fries. Love it. This is where it gives you a little bit different foliage, skinnier, kind of resembles grass a little bit, so it's a nice contrast between the really big leaves. This might be Diamond Lake. I don't know for sure. And then and this hosta right here is Komodo Dragon. You have the rippled edges on that one. Very nice. Nice and big. These are all extra large or large, larger in, around here. I've got a big tree. I didn't want to look really weird. A Bequa drinking gourd. So this is a part where, again, it's a lot of greenish blue foliage together. So having something a little different here, lighter, and maybe like a chartreuse, might have been a little bit better. But I do have this one right here. I'm not sure. It could be etched glass or stained glass. This one, I, I hate saying it because I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Sagay. This one's struggling a little bit over here. I'm just always, it's not as big. And pictures I see, it's bigger than that. So, blame it on the tree. Guacamole. Love that one. It's got some shinier leaves. And some hosses are a little more prone to slug damage than others. And the other thing is if you have a healthy plant, I find that the slugs don't bother them as much. And this one right here. Dancing Queen. I had a look. I'm like, this is my little... So it's, it's tiny. So this one is Dancing Queen. Again, the rippled edges, just a green. I love it. And the other thing about Haas is keep in mind that some are vase-shaped. Like this is World Cup and see how the petioles are going up. So this is where something a little more mounding in front will be a really nice contrast. Again, Coleus. Don't know this variety, but you can see that's got a lot of damage on it. So, like I said, some hostas are just more prone to damage, to slug. I have seen some earwigs, though. And then this one is Afterglow. Beautiful foliage on that. I better get going. I didn't want this to be too long, but I might not have a choice here. 
back here this gets a lot more shade so this might be where you, it's deep shade I do have a Sun King Aralia back here it's not doing as good as the others it's been here for quite some time so it might be something where I might have to move that one and give it better circumstances love World Cup love it that's that's amazing I find that your hostas with a little more texture, like the ripple leaves, tend to have less damage by slugs. They don't like that thickness. I don't have any deer issues. I do have rabbits, so that is one thing that... They're nasty little things. They, they like to eat the hostas when they're just starting to come out, which is... Just horrible. Again, curly fries hosta. I know my shadow's there, sorry. Love this. I, I can't say enough about this. I just love the color. Love, I just love it. Brunnera. Like this too. Slugs don't like it. It's got um, a rougher texture to it. It does self seed. A good little baby, which is good. It can seed all over the place. It blooms early too, and a nice blue, very, very blue, and it lasts a long time, so must have. And this is Goat's Beard. I love Goat's Beard. Doesn't like to sit in a lot of water. I had it in the boggy area, and I lost two of the plants. I moved this one over here, and this is just loving its life. It does like moisture, but just not sitting in it. i just, and this is, it's not quite five feet, but that's impressive. You know I love my Sum and Substance hostas. They're probably a little easier to get to than some of the other ones, but it's huge from the window here to the edging here, that's six feet, so you can see that's massive. The tag says the plant's six feet apart. I didn't listen and I had to move them because I would say this expanse here is probably 14 feet. But there, I find that any plants by the house tend to get a bit bigger anyway, so it, that might be one of the issues. I shouldn't say issue because I'm loving the size. Bleeding heart. That's another nice companion plant for shade. Early bloomer. It's still looking pretty good back there. I just know this area right here holds on to the moisture very well. So that could be another reason why they look so good. So I did get this all done. <clears throat> and I, I got a lot of viewers saying you should go no dig. I, I did go no dig. So what I meant by digging up the turf is is this right here so I created an edge so which is really deep and probably about a foot here so that way my mulch has some place to fall into because what happens is when I get snow it pushes everything so I needed to create that lip there for the mulch to kind of just kind of stop and not go into my grass. So otherwise that was the, like I said, I only did about a foot wide of the edge just to create that really sharp edge look. The rest was not dug. I, I don't have time to do that anymore. And um, I just, and it works out for me. I did run out of cardboard, so I have a lot of mulch on this area. It'll be eight months before I can plant. and. Um, I'll say this real quick before <laughs> I know this is going to be long because this was all no dig. I This, what happened is I did dig around here all of the sod because I didn't want the mulch going into my kennel area if it would get washed into there. Because like I said, when, when I get a lot of rain, it pushes all of the mulch in here. So I needed to have that lip so it needed to be a little bit lower than the pavers in there. My area where I had the pool, that was all no dig. Um, I didn't even lay cardboard down in there. Um, it's done really well. 
So all of the sod that was from here, I just piled on here, let it compost down, and I just planted directly into it and mulch. Same around here, that I had cardboard for, laid mulch down and planted into. Digging up sod is a lot of work and trying to dispose of it too. So yeah, this is, none of this is dug. I've had pretty good results. I would say the first year may require a little bit more weeding, but that's okay. More Brennera. Go over my pole. Love it. Um, let's see here. This one is Regal Splendor. This is a more upright Hosta. Love it. Next to uh, Crossa Regal. Huge. That's a favorite too. <clears throat> This one here is king size. I don't know on the other ones. It was all from friends, which are they're pretty spectacular. I don't recommend snow on the mountain to anyone. Unless if you have a big area and you can keep it contained. It is pretty. It's aggressive. Very, very aggressive. It doesn't look so hot right now, but it's not a plant I'm in love with. It kind of just does what it does. More turtle head. You can see this is smaller. I blame it on the tree, although the Sun King here looks pretty good. I have a Stillbees back here, which is Chocolate Shogun. That will be moved. It's getting eaten by the Sun King. This here, we have had a good amount of rain. And um, I dug out all of my Caladiums, but it is just, it's a very well-draining soil. This is a bed that I created but just layering grass clippings and leaves. So that's what all of the soil is. Again, this was also a no-dig one. So for almost an entire year I was, but yeah. It's damp down below, but it's very, very well draining. Love the Sun King. So I'm thinking this likes, I'm not going to say dry, but it definitely is massive. It puts on flowers a little bit later in the season, but it's not something that I need. I just love the color of the foliage. This little hosta here is a lakeside paisley print. It's small, but like I find that hostas grow a bit better when the soil conditions are very moist. They tend to get a bit bigger too. I had a viewer that said, now this is, that the pasta that I forgot the name of is called Remember Me. I just, I'm like, I'm not going <laughs> to forget it now. I will, re I will remember, remember me. Isn't that beautiful? That's just, oh, gorgeous. I have a fern. I'm not fantastic at growing ferns. It could be because this is a very, very well-draining area and it needs a little bit moist, moisture. So this is called Godzilla Jap Giant Japanese Painted Fern. There's nothing giant about it yet. It should get three feet. So I'm just thinking that the Sun King is shading it and it will be moving it forward in this opening. Maybe a little bit more than that. Hukras. This is doing really good here. I don't know the name. I still struggle with uh, this plant thriving for me. I still plant it because I'm I'm working with it, trying to see what it likes, but it really loves the spot. Uh, this is another summon substance. We'll see. I'm expecting it to fill in this whole area here. But again, this is a very well-draining soil, very dry. This little guy down here is called Sun Mouse. This huge one. I mean, it's it is gorgeous, but I, it's just not in the right spot. This one is called Seducer. So that one is definitely a biggie. I will probably be moving that. Another Remember Me kind of hidden. Chocolate Shogun. Like I said, I will be moving all of those. It's just getting taken over. Curly Fries Hosta. Can't have too many of those. This is a nice Lamium. This is easy to control. 
Solomon seal back here. Like I said, it's, it does spread, but it's not overly aggressive. And it's just one that I keep taking pieces of and putting in other areas of my garden. It's a nice clump. And it, it ages nicely too. I mean, it still looks like it did when it, in spring. And if you can see the little variegation. Hmm. Yeah, I got four Remember Me. You can see this one is a bit bigger, so it's, it's a little bit better than the other ones. This is Hosta Hadspin Blue, so I like that one. See, this hooker is definitely loving it here. So I'm thinking it likes it a better draining for sure. I have lost hookeras when I've planted in too much moisture, which was a shame because it was kind of a peach colored one. And that's why I still want to experiment with hookeras because it adds that contrast and foliage color and just looks great with hostas. I don't like this one. I will leave it. I don't care if it reverts back to the blue. Um, I'm just going to say, don't get Hosta Hans. Maybe some of yours looks fantastic, but it should be variegated. And um, I guess I'm just not impressed with it. This is a really big leaf here, and yet it's just weird. I will leave it, though. I'm not going to get rid of it. But whatever it decides to do, I'm just going to let it do on its own. Another remember me. I did have a curly fries back here and I think something last year chewed it down. I thought maybe it would dip, bounce back, but mm, nope, it did not. This one here is one last dance. Um, there is some variegation you can see. It's a little more pronounced early in the season, but this is another favorite of mine. I think I have a thing for the rippled edges. I'm finding it because this one here too, I think this is another Niagara Falls, but you can see I need to move this one. Just because it's definitely getting crowded out. I was not expecting the Sun Kings to do like that much. They are impressive and I love them. So that it is definitely a plant. The one thing about the Sun Kings, they, are, they die back to the ground. So in the spring, everything starts from the ground up so it's not like they keep this form which I kind of like especially in my zone I find that plants that die all the way to the ground I have better luck with they can survive our winters yeah all of these houses in here I'm, I do not know if you do know the varieties please post them in the comments that helps me out a lot a columbine tends to self-seed but does really good in a part shade situation. This is a coral bells or hookra that I moved and this is doing really good. I mean it's and it even flowered. I, I love that. I'm like here. Like I don't know. And I love the purple foliage. I mean I'm in love with hookra but it's just not in love with me. Maybe I'm too nice to it. I'm giving it a really good situation. I don't know this one, but look at that little dude. So I do like the mini hostas too. It's just um, getting eaten up a little bit. Yeah, so the lily of the valley that I have in the back, I had gotten from a friend, and on a, it was just, just the plant bare roots, and um, I think I had four little stems of it. I just grouped them all together, shoved them in the ground, and hoped for the best. Well, you saw how that spread. Yeah, like wildfire. Yeah, this is a lily of the valley that I purchased, oh, at least, I mean, this was my first flower bed, so 12 years ago. This is as much as it's done in 12 years. Go figure. So like I said, it might be because this is a very well-draining area and it just spreads a lot faster in wet conditions. Be careful when purchasing ground covers. I can't say this enough because these were six teeny tiny little plugs. And honestly, I was going to go back to the store and get more. But I'm like, you know, 
I'll give it a shot. And it's it's eaten up so many plants in here. I have a cross of regal back here that's just thriving. Um, I'm leaving it. I don't move any of these plants because I don't want to take the chance of moving this with it. I had a dwarf goat's beard. I love dwarf goat's beard. If you can find it, get it. I almost prefer it over a stilby. It's it's a huge bloomer. It's it's unbelievable. I wish I could have had pictures of it because, and it would have been right in here. It's kind of a hard plant for me to find, but I love, I mean, I love goat's beard, but the dwarf one, unreal. And I do have another little hosta down here. So yeah, I, this, every year I would pull and pull and pull and pull and pull and make room for my perennials in here and, and eventually I just gave up and just let it do what it wants to do. And I did have some Pachysandra in here. Love that for a ground cover, but it's in here because it does show up in the early spring. Here. Right down there. I mean, it's not dead, but it's definitely being taken over, which is a shame because that's a really nice ground cover too. But yeah, when I say be careful when planting ground covers because I, I have a lot of them. Um, yeah, when I first started gardening, no one warned me, don't plant mint into the ground. Guess what I did? Yep, I planted mint into the ground. Oh my goodness, that took a bit to, and I finally did control it. It was over in this area over there. And then also, like I said, ground cover should come with a warning. And people at garden centers, especially like your family owned that, that know their stuff, warn people about ground covers. Because um, Snow on the Mountain is one bishop's weed, gout weed, whatever you want to call it. That should have a bit of a warning on it. This one, considering that is sold amongst, um, like the annuals, that, this is crazy. Lily of the Valley should have a warning. And then, yeah, the other one I planted in this area when I first started, Crown Vetch. Oh my goodness. I'm like, I can't, exp it was worse than mint. So any of you who know your plants know ugh. these are ground covers that are great for, I mean, I do have some big gardens, but it is something where it will take over. So crown vetch took a long time to eradicate. I would say it's, it's worse than snow on the mountain. And, um, Every plant has its place, so just just make sure when you're dealing with the ground covers that. And that's the other thing in this area. I'm not doing too many perennial ground covers, just because I don't have that, like a rock or pavers, anything like that, to control it and keep it in. So it is going to be, I want to say, I'm not. I'm trying to go more like pines and stuff that keep their form and behave because I definitely don't want it to go in the grass and have to worry about that area too. I want the foundation plantings here to be a bit simpler but I probably will be using a lot of the ones like you will probably see ladies mantle over there but and I, I know I, I say a lot about ladies mantle but yeah I'm sure this tour got too long but hopefully you guys enjoyed this got some ideas for your shade gardens for next year. Again, check out New Hampshire Hostas just for a reference. Write down your favorites. It, it's really helpful. I found it helpful. Um, and then know your zones too, because like I said, and, and your situations, whether it's dry conditions, boggy conditions. But yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this tour and bye for now.